All right, let's talk about Zen 3. AMD just did their presentation this morning, if you're watching this at the time of upload, where they unveiled a lot of juicy details about their new 5000 series CPUs for the desktop, of course, on the new Zen 3 architecture. They're new CPUs, but they're kind of not new CPUs. They're using more or less the same seven nanometer architecture from Zen 2, the uh, Ryzen 3000 series chips that we all know and love, but this is a refined version of that architecture. So if we're talking Intel lingo, it's more of a tick than a talk. So basically, you know, just to give a really high level explanation, we're not gonna deep dive into this or anything um, because a lot of it goes over my head personally, but they've essentially moved this architecture to an eight core complex in order to consolidate every core. So Zen 2 used to use a, or does use a four plus four design. So each, let's say four CPUs had their own share, their own pool of 16 megabytes of L3 cache. But Zen 3 is gonna use a unified pool of 32 megabytes of cache so that every core can now communicate directly to that memory, to that cache, without having to traverse across the entire die. That's essentially gonna allow for two times more direct access to the L3 cache, allowing for reduced memory latency. So AMD is claiming that because of these, this, this sort of one core improvement or refinement to the architecture that we're gonna be seeing 19% uh, desktop IPC uplift. That's a huge asterisk grain of salt until we get third-party benchmarks in here, but that's gonna be a lot greater gaming performance potentially across a multitude of applications. Additionally, we're gonna see power efficiency increase by up to 24%. These are double-digit performance per watt gains on the same process node, which is pretty impressive. And that's also gonna be giving uh, allegedly a 2.8X more efficient uh, standing than the Core i9-10900K from Intel, which, I guess isn't saying too much. It's, you know, the, the 10900K isn't a super power efficient chip in the first place because they're kind of just rehashing that 14 nanometer architecture, but we'll talk more about Intel and how they uh, play into all of this as well in just a bit. I want to quickly go over the full CPU stack because I know that's what you guys are uh, really here for and, and curious about. These are potentially gonna be new CPUs that will be going inside of your system. So we're gonna talk about them. This is by no means the full family in the Ryzen 5000 series, but rather the first four SKUs that AMD has revealed today. So the first one, we'll talk about them in order from least expensive to most expensive, is the Ryzen 5 5600X. This is successor to the Ryzen 5 3600X and like, like that chip, uh, it's gonna have six cores, 12 threads. It's gonna boost up to 4.6 gigahertz out of the box and it'll have a 65 watt TDP. I believe it also comes included with a Wraith cooler and it's gonna retail for 299, 299 US dollars. That's roughly about $100 more than what you can currently buy like a Ryzen 5 3600 or 3600X for. And you're gonna actually see that trend continue for the other SKUs. We're looking at around $100 premiums over, uh, over last gen. Not the last few Ryzen generations or anything to go by, the 5600X is most likely gonna be the sweet spot gaming CPU. It's probably gonna be able to handle light content creation as well, but more or less it's gonna be the value option for gamers. Um, because it's only got six cores um, and it's uh, it's most likely gonna fall in the footsteps of the Ryzen 5 3600 and 3600X. This should also be the easiest chip to cool out of the four SKUs that we're talking about today as it's the only one with a 65 watt TDP. The other ones are all 105 watts, but the fact that this chip comes included with a Wraith cooler indicates that it's probably not the most demanding chip to keep cool. Next, we have the Ryzen 7 5800X, successor to the Ryzen 7 3800X. It's gonna feature eight cores and 16 threads, boosting up to 4.7 gigahertz with that 105 watt TDP and a price tag of 449 US dollars. Now, if I'm just speculating, this is probably gonna have about the same or maybe a little bit better gaming performance than the 5600, uh, the 5600X, but it's gonna have much more solid multi-thread performance because of those additional cores and threads. So it makes it a more versatile CPU than the 5600X for users who are engaged in more tasks than just gaming. So if you're streaming, video editing, uh, rendering, doing some CAD work, things like that, then you're probably gonna want to at least get the 5800X because the 5600X is gonna fall a little bit short of, of those tasks in terms of multi-threaded performance. If you're more serious about content creation, then you may consider the Ryzen 9 5900X, which has four more cores uh, at its disposal, 12 cores, 24 threads, uh, this is of course the successor to the Ryzen 9 3900X, which was a fantastic CPU. It's gonna boost to 4.8 gigahertz with a 105 watt TDP and a price tag of 549 
USD. So this is just more performance all around. Higher boost clocks, more cores and threads. You're gonna see a slight uptick in gaming performance over the 5800X, but you're, you're gonna see much more significant gains in multi-threaded workloads over that chip. Then finally, you've got your big boy Ryzen 9 5950X, which as far as we can tell right now is the flagship CPU in this family. 16 cores, 32 threads, following in the footsteps of the Ryzen 9 3950X, which was just a, a beast of a CPU, boosting to 4.9 gigahertz. Uh, I did read somewhere just briefly online uh, that uh, AMD wanted to, to be able to hit that five gigahertz mark with its boost, because that's a nice fun round uh, marketing number. And it also seems to compete a bit more with what Intel's doing these days. Uh, but I think someone at AMD, I forget who, uh, they mentioned that uh, by doing so, they would have to have more heavily bin CPUs to, to be able to hit that five gigahertz frequency that uh, inventory and availability would just plummet. And they really wanted to focus and prioritize availability um, so that the launch didn't turn into something akin to NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series GPUs. Uh, so I guess that's a worthwhile trade-off. We also have a 105 watt TDP here. Pretty impressive, same TDP uh, as all the other chips, uh, except for the, the 5600X but it's a 16 core 32 thread chip boosting to 4.9 gigahertz. Again, we'll have to wait and see what kind of power consumption we're actually looking at. Obviously TDP isn't exactly the same as that. AMD is pricing this chip at 799 US. Again, uh, falling in line with that more or less $100 premium over the Ryzen 3000 series. This is according to AMD, the best of the best. Uh, when it comes to gaming and multi-threaded performance. They're, they're claiming it's the best gaming CPU and best multi-threaded performance uh, that any gaming CPU currently offers. So this seems to be like the most performance possible that you can get out of Ryzen without having to jump to Threadripper. So if you don't need the extra IO and just like a ridiculous number of PCIe Gen 4 lanes and things like that, um, the Ryzen 3950X, 59, 30, 5950X, wow, this is, this is gonna get, take a while to get used to. And the 5950X is gonna be that chip that a lot of power users are looking at, especially because you can get on that platform for a lot cheaper than you can with Threadripper because those boards, those motherboards start at a much higher uh, base price than say the uh, 500 series or even the 400 series boards from AMD. The 5000 series CPUs that we just talked about uh, will be supported on both 500 series motherboards like X570 and B550, as well as 400 series motherboards uh, like X470 and B450. However, with those 400 series boards, you are gonna need a BIOS update that's gonna have to be rolled out by the motherboard manufacturer. Big disclaimer and warning here, some of those BIOS updates might drop compatibility with older CPUs and you may even not be able to roll back the BIOS to previous versions, meaning that once you upgrade your board's BIOS, you may never be able to drop in, uh, say, a Ryzen 3000 series CPU or older ever again in that board. So just make sure that you know what you're getting into before you do the BIOS update and that you have all the hardware required and that you're not accidentally nuking support for a chip that you were planning to use with that board. As I mentioned earlier, this is not by any stretch all of the 5000 series chips that will ever be available. Uh, most likely we're gonna see some Ryzen 3 chips. In the past, we've seen Ryzen 3 uh, kind of follow um, the launch of you know their other chips like the Ryzen 9, 7s, and 5s. So I'm expecting those to come at some point. Also, also, uh, APUs, we might see some 5000 series APUs, which would most likely be using last gen architecture, so Zen 2, but that could still be exciting if, uh, you know, for users who are looking for really small form factor builds that, you know, don't house discrete GPUs or for really budget gamers who are, you know, still looking to, to target um, decent frame rates and uh, low intensive games, esports titles, and things like that. Um, could also be good for HTPC users and the like. So those chips we can still expect. Um, there was some rumor and speculation that AMD would be launching a 10-core CPU to sort of compete with uh, uh, Intel's flagship Core i9-10900K, which is a 10-core 20-thread SKU, but so far no mention of that, no hint or indication that something like that is, is gonna be coming. Uh, it still could, I'm not sure. Now that we know the stack so far from what we've seen from this presentation, I don't know if a 10 core really makes sense for AMD to, to squeeze it in between an eight core and a 12 core. It just seems like a very marginal stopgap that doesn't seem very worthwhile, but again, you never know. A more exciting possibility for me is if the 5950X isn't the flagship CPU in this family and that AMD is gonna eventually launch some crazy 18 or 20 core CPU that's just gonna blow us all out of the water. It's not unreasonable to think that they might do that. They've continuously pushed 
the boundaries in terms of core counts and thread counts with almost every single uh, new Ryzen launch that they've done. So far, the, the SKUs that they've revealed today, no change in core count as far as we've seen. The, the flagship Ryzen 9 is still 16 cores, just like it was with the 3950X. This is just pure speculation. I have no you know, concrete evidence or any sort of indication of why they would do this, but it's, it's sort of just wishful thinking. And based on what AMD has done in the past, pushing the core count forward, it would be cool to see them uh, have something more than a 16 core CPU for the Ryzen 5000 series, but we'll have to wait and see about that. But for now, the four confirmed CPU SKUs that we just discussed are gonna be available globally on November 5th, which is right around the corner and follows the launch of the NVIDIA RTX 3070 by about a week. So it's gonna be insane. It's gonna be insane for you guys eating up all these benchmarks and getting all this information at once. Uh, and it's gonna be absolute hell for reviewers and content creators like me who have to um, test all this stuff. Obviously there's a lot of excitement, but um, there's a lot of a lot of work involved as well. But yeah, it's pretty crazy that both of these huge launches are gonna almost collide with each other, happening just about a week apart. Although I guess you could argue that the RTX 3070 may not launch at all if it happens to be uh, another paper launch disaster like the uh, RTX 3080 and 3090 work. Moving on though, let's briefly talk about performance. This is a huge grain of salt here because everything we know about performance so far has just been directly from AMD's mouth. It's first party testing and benchmarks and stuff. So huge, huge grain of salt here. I don't know why I made this small gesture when saying huge, huge grain of salt. For starters, they showed off the 5900X in the shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at 1080p. It was actually nice that they were testing at that CPU bound resolution as opposed to 4K or something like that, which is kind of useless. And they showed that the 5900X saw a 28% increase in FPS over the previous gen 3900 XT. I thought it was kind of interesting that they used the XT version, which obviously clocks higher out of the box. They probably could have shown a greater FPS increase if they compared it to the 3900 X, which I don't think anyone would have faulted them for because that seems to be like the natural predecessor. If anything, I guess that just shows AMD's confidence in the performance of these new CPUs. They also claim the 5900X to be faster than competing Intel CPUs, which falls in line with their claims of this now being the fastest gaming CPU on the market. They showed off double digit FPS gains in other games besides Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which spit out an average FPS gain of 26% at 1080p over the Ryzen 3000 series. 26% is like, you see 26% gain on a benchmark graph, that's no small amount. So it's, it's pretty exciting, but again, grain of salt. Don't be excited. Don't, don't believe a word out of those red devil's mouths until third party benchmarks are available. They also tested single core performance of the 5900X in Cinebench R20 in the single threaded test, of course, and they found it to be the first desktop CPU to ever break a score of 600, scoring 631 points just under what the 5950X 16 core CPU was able to achieve, getting a score of 640 points in that same Cinebench R20 single threaded test. On a quick side note here, if you happen to purchase a, a CPU recently, or if you're really happy with your CPU and have no need or, or reason to upgrade to Zen 3, then you might consider the next generation after that, which is gonna be Zen 4 on five nanometer architecture. And uh, you'll probably be happy to hear that AMD briefly mentioned really quickly that they are on track uh, to release Zen 4 on time and that it's currently in development. At this point, let's talk about Intel for a brief minute. Right after the AMD presentation ended, I was on Twitter, you know, hitting F5, refreshing, seeing what people were saying. And I saw a lot of people, a lot of comments about Intel and how they're gonna respond to this if they're completely doomed. I saw a lot of rip Intel. I even posted my own fun uh, Intel meme. And it's a good question. Are they gonna be able to stay competitive? How are they gonna compete with Ryzen at this point if, if all of their claims are true? Because you know, over the years, if you look at Ryzen over the years, they've gotten more and more competitive, inching closer and closer to Intel. But superior gaming performance has always been the one thing that Intel can still brag about. And it's been a sound argument for users looking to chase the highest possible frame rates. No one's gonna fault you. Up until this point, no one would ever fault anyone for buying Intel if gaming performance was all they cared about. But if Intel's, or I'm sorry, if AMD's claims are true and they're now the fastest gaming CPU and the fastest content creation CPU with multi-threaded performance, what does Intel have left to offer gamers or content creators or just users in general. Intel did recently confirm that their next gen Rocket Lake desktop CPUs are gonna launch Q1 of 2021. There was a lot of speculation. Rumors were flying around that it was gonna be Q1, Q2. So Intel wanted to put those rumors to rest apparently and also knowing that AMD was right around the corner or just about to uh, announce their Ryzen 5000 series chips, they came out with a confirmation saying that Q1 2021 is when Rocket Lake desktop chips are expected to release. And these are gonna have full PCIe Gen 4 support, which 
is good. It's better than not having it, but it's also not very exciting because it's something that has existed on AMD platforms, even on their budget platforms uh, for, for a long time now. So they're pl pretty much just playing catch up in that area. Okay, so big whoop there. And it's presumably gonna be on the same 14 nanometer architecture that we've seen stretched out year after year, all the way dating back to what was it, Skylake? So that's a big that's a big yawn from me, and I think the the public in general, if that if that is the case, and it's still in the same architecture, uh, which means you know uh, how much more performance are, are they going to be able to squeeze out? In a way, Intel may have to accept the fact that they're no longer the top dog when it comes to raw performance, and they'll have to adjust their model and pricing accordingly. But whether or not they're actually going to be able to swallow their pride to do that remains to be seen. I mean, hypothetically, if Rocket Lake did steal the gaming crown back from AMD, how much faster would those chips actually be? I mean, would we still be looking at single-digit performance gains? Is that really going to be enough to, to sway people from AMD back to Intel? It would have to really be a significant improvement, which I don't see happening until they shrink that process node to 10 nanometer or smaller. Also, what are they going to have to do to the chip, to that 14 nanometer architecture, in order to get it performing better in games than than Ryzen 5000 series? Are they gonna have to clock them so high to the point where these chips need to be so heavily binned that availability just falls to crap and we're gonna just see very limited supply? And would that mean Intel would just keep their prices way too high because they have the gaming crown back? I mean, we could really go on and on all day about this and keep speculating, but the point I'm trying to make here is that Intel seems to be in a much tougher spot than they ever have been with AMD in recent history. And it's gonna take uh, it's gonna take a big reality check that they've needed for a long time now to really make some serious change and stay competitive. If you guys have any ideas or would like to share your thoughts on what Intel needs to do in order to stay competitive with AMD at this point, feel free to share your thoughts down below in the comments. Toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more content on the way and I'll see you guys in the next video.